In today's video, we're going on a special tour of Brightline's Operations Center, which is housed at Miami Central Station. Now, I just want to be upfront with you guys that I was not allowed to take video inside the Operations Center, but I was able to take photographs. So I took a picture of the entire Operations Center, and I took a picture of myself standing there as proof that I was there, uh, which we'll talk a little bit more about in the video. Anyway, this was a cool experience that I'm happy to share with you guys, even if it's not in the manner that I wish it had been filmed. So just a quick shout out to Brightline for actually giving us the time of day for the tour and Carson Reed. He is the one who was actually invited by Brightline and invited me as a plus one. You will see him throughout the video. So thank you again. And uh, let's go ahead and start. This is our smart lounge. So it's available to any guest with a ticket. And it is uh, fully accessible with our bar, Mary Mary. So you can get coffee, you can get a drink, a snack, whatever it is that you'd like to, to enjoy while you're waiting the lounge for your departure. Um, most, if not all, of our guests will come in a couple minutes early ahead of their upper trip because of the accommodations that are available at the station. So it's very comfortable, people can sit, relax. Uh, we have a lot of guests who work, so people mm -hmm. have their laptops, uh, sort of enjoy the you know, 15, 20 minutes before they get on board. I love this, by the way, the honoring Henry uh, yeah. Flagler and the railroad. It is a pretty neat space. I mean, it's always important to remember the history. Oh, this is cool. So they removed the, the credit card thing you had to tap. I think this really is more seamless. So you just, uh, now you pay over there mm -hmm. and then just walk around. out. When I was on the train, like, you guys like, are you guys like rolling, not like, you just scan the QR code and they can bring the food to you? Yes. I noticed we are, that. We are starting to roll that out. So that's, that was a pilot program, I think, when you saw it. Okay. Um, it may or may not be going live pretty soon. So. Can, can you talk about that? I haven't written Brightline since Orlando, when, the, when you guys first yeah. launched the Orlando yeah, yeah. service. Um, so what we've been piloting is in seat ordering. And so there is a menu card with a QR code on it. And ultimately what you do is you scan the QR code and through the Square platform, you can order your snacks and beverage or a meal combo, whatever it is you'd like to have mm. from your seat. You identify your location, and then oh. the train attendants bring it right to you. Oh, that's so nice. it's, it's really nice, yeah. So you tried it out? I tried. It was, it was awesome. I liked it. That's good. And it was fast. It's been two minutes. Yeah. 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 Cool. It's great. So the, TA, the the train attendants still do come up and down dials with their cards and their offerings, just in case people prefer that kind of experience. Um, but for me, I'm naturally an introvert, and I just rather do everything <laughs> exactly. kind of in my hand. So uh, so it was great. I, I loved it. Good. Good. Are you guys planning on adding a like, cafe car or like something like a, what Amtrak is doing? Yeah. Is there anything? You know, I would never <laughs> knock the possibility. Um, I think right now our intention and our interest is making sure we have enough capacity for all the people who want to travel. So that's always where our intention is going to be, is right. to bring that experience. But I, I would say that in the future, that's definitely something that would be. All right, so I'm in the shop area now looking at a new hat because mine is kind of faded. It looks like they're not doing the Nike hats anymore. Got a new era hat, so I'm gonna get the black one for now. But I really like the new style where you don't have to tap your card to come in and out. You just walk right in, and then there's a cashier that'll help you out. That thing is pretty cool. And then of course they have snacks. Even though if you're premium, you don't really need to buy snacks. They've got them on board for you. But if you are in smart class or just want a snack in general, they have it here. They have hygiene items, medications, chargers. It's a nice, cool little shop to check out. So we're now inside the premium lounge for uh, Miami Central, which we've been here many times in our videos. Got snack offerings, large floor to ceiling windows showing the downtown, the growing downtown Miami skyline. You can see the Paramount Miami off in the distance. Yeah, I've done, I'm probably like an outlier. I uh, just traveled from one station and then immediately came back because I was just making a video about it. But yeah, I always have a good time on premium, especially from Orlando. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's really nice. It's really nice. Once we, what we've learned is that once people try premium, they realize that that's really the experience to take. Um, and smart is exceptional too. It's just the ease and the amenities you get there. Yes, yeah. it's extraordinary. Okay, so unfortunately, I cannot take you guys inside of the operations center uh, in video form, but I did take pictures. I took a picture of the operations center. Took a picture with me standing there, proof that I was actually there. So I'm going to try to recap a little bit of what's talked about on that tour inside that you guys could not see or hear. So right off the bat, we see a bunch of screens up along the wall. It's a curved wall. And then we see a bunch of consoles in the front. So 
I'm going to talk about a little bit of the screens on the wall and then a little bit about what they do down at the console level. So on the screens, they have a variety of information. There is one at the bottom right corner where you can see a weather radar. That way they're able to anticipate severe weather, which may cause significant delays depending on uh, how much rain falls. There was a recent event where there was uh, flooded train tracks and over a thousand passengers had to be relocated, uh, either shuttles or given uh, rideshare vouchers, stuff like that. So those things they need to keep an eye on and anticipate when there's gonna be bad weather. There's also a screen that shows a live camera, which will be on the top right of the one of the bridges that goes over the river by Fort Lauderdale. So they're able to see in real time if there's anything holding up the bridge or any delays. They work in partnership with the Coast Guard because they have jurisdiction over that bridge. They also have a screen towards the middle where you can see there's a variety of lines and colors, there's green, red. Those are the train tracks. They have it all mapped out of which train is going through where, which they have clearance to go through, which one is being used or which one is not in use, which one's about to be used. And from there, they can see right there in real time and, you know, make adjustments or anything like that. There's also a screen over on the far left where they have customer feedback. When you finish writing Brightline, you're given a survey. They told me that 15% of people given the survey actually fill it out. And uh, which is a good number is what they told me on the screen at the moment while we were there. Uh, it was saying 10, 10, 10, 10. For the most part, 10s, which is good, 10 out of 10. And then people saying they love the experience, they love Brightline. There was one that I noticed that was red and it was like, I wanna say six or four, I'm not sure, but it was, a, it was a bad review saying that it was just too pricey. So I'm sure Brightline to where it can be expensive, but their reasoning, and I agree with their reasoning, is that it is a luxury experience. You're not just getting on a train and it's being used to go from point A to point B, like Tri-Rail or Amtrak. You're paying for an experience. And I said this before on the channel, I'll say it again. Yes, you're going from point A to point B, but the journey is really what matters here when you ride with Brightline. Also visible there is uh, at the console where the person that's working there is sitting. There's a screen that has the cameras from the station and they can see in real time if there's any incidents on the platform or getting on and off the train that may cause a delay they're able to see there's cameras all throughout the area so you can see me standing in front of the operations center that area that i was standing in is specifically for vips people taking tours maybe media as well um because i asked them i was like what is this area for i thought it was for like a supervisor to just look at their employees and make sure they're doing a good job because you literally enter the door and it's closed off. It literally just has that rail. You see me leaning there. That's it, that's it. There's nothing else there. There's no access to the operation center through there because that's the only sectioned off area. This is the first ever locomotive we received. Right. Oh, this one? Yes. Wow. This is the 101. This is the first ever locomotive that Brightline has received, the 101 locomotive. First ever Brightline locomotive. It's a pretty cool fun fact, 101, look out for it. added the yeah. advertising on there <laughs> and they got advertisements under as well for the luggage space all right that was a little peek at the premium class now the customers are starting to board the train we are going to go sit in front of the train but unfortunately just like the operation center i'm not allowed to take any photos or videos well, operation center i did take photos but nothing at all for the front of the train. You see all the travelers going to their seats. Some smart, some premium. Right the and what better locomotive to go into than the original 101? All right, putting the phone down now. Okay, so unfortunately, going up to the front of the train where everything is maneuvered and driven, I was not able to record or take pictures. Nothing at all it is a matter of security. So you guys, unfortunately, were not able to see the inside of that. Um, but I can tell you there's a lot of knobs, there's a lot of levers, there's a lot of screens, a lot of 
everything. Everything you can imagine to operate a train is there. There's two seats because there's the person that's actually driving the train and then there is the engineer. They work hand in hand. If there's any issues, they can communicate with each other. And uh, we were given a very brief rundown of what they do. One of the screens had like red all across it. And he was like, see those lights over there? Which is those vertical lights that uh, kind of look like a street light. When they're red, you're not clear to go through. When they're green, you are. So the screen was red because they were in station and the vertical lights were red. And then he said, if they were to try to drive the train with it saying the red screen and the lights being red, you would only get a few feet before it automatically locks and then shuts down and you can't move it and you'd have to communicate that to the operations center, which I think is crazy, the sensors and all the things they have to make sure you're not able to go when you're not supposed to. Okay, we were just given a Brightline goodie bag at the end of that tour. It's got good stuff in there. Let's go ahead and unbag it. All right, guys. So this is the Brightline bag we were just given at the end of the tour. So first we have a Brightline train set with two locomotives and one regular car there, passenger car. I have one of these at home, not the full set. So I appreciate this being given. I have just the little one uh, passenger set. So I think I can combine it and have two passenger cars and uh, two locomotives, of course. Another item, a Brightline insulated water bottle with the Brightline branding there. Same thing on my hat. We've got a uh, Brightline safety sticker, stay off the tracks, stay off the train tracks. And then it has gobrightline.com slash safety. Big thing. A lot of people down here do not know what to do when the train is coming. They just stop on the tracks and uh, unfortunately they get hit, they get injured or killed. And then we also have uh, trespassers who are uh, intentionally getting on the tracks, which is unfortunate. Another thing we have, oh, this is cool. So we have a bright line. I'm not gonna take it out of the bag. A bright line notebook or journal. We've got a t-shirt, which they do sell. I don't think they sell this specific one. It's a large. So this, is a special Brightline t-shirt. Just says Brightline, 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 Brightline. And of course, so that's it for the bag. The bag itself is reusable. I'm gonna plan a Brightline video very soon. I have a cool idea. I think we're gonna ride up to Orlando again, make a day out of it and come back the same day and show you guys how that connection works. So if you guys are interested in that, subscribe, hit the bell button to be notified when I upload a new video. Like this video, leave a comment. Have you ever taken Brightline? Have you considered it? What do you think about the price point? Is it too expensive? Is it just the right price for the experience that you get? Let me know in the comments and I'll catch you in the next video.